You ready for supper? I am. It's almost supper time. I'm hungry. I actually just ate a bowl of cereal. <laughs> I had cereal I had earlier. Two. I needed a snack, but I am ready for supper. I think it should be good. So currently, Granny is still in the hospital right now, and so Mom is gone. And so instead of just cooking supper for me and Austin, I thought I should cook enough, and we'll all eat together. So we're going to have beef stew, slaw, and cornbread. And my arm's tired because I'm such a weakling. So <laughs> That sounds good. So Thanks, think Mama Corey. Yeah. We'll see if it's any count. It should be really good. It should be good, but Granny's doing better, and we just... Thank you so much for your prayers. That's why we think she's mm -hmm. doing so good. All the prayers are working, and we so. just appreciate that so much. I mean, I don't feel like we could ever fully express how much that means to us. That's right. We are thankful, and I do think that's why she's doing better, so thank you. Thank yeah. you for your prayers. All right, I guess I better go start supper. Let's roll. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get my vegetables ready. In the past, I have started the beef stew and started browning my meat and realized, oops, I didn't cut my vegetables. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those. I'm going to peel these potatoes, cut them up, cut up an onion, cut some carrots. That's Olive in the background. She's looking for her daddy. He's coming home soon. I'm going to get all of these cut before I ever start the meat browning. That way, once it's brown, because it won't take but a minute, they'll all be ready to put in. Potatoes are done. Since the carrots aren't oblong like that it's much easier to either stand over the compost or stand over the trash and peel those but I did peel them so chop all the ends and I'll go ahead and chop them and the potatoes and we'll save the onion for last since it will be the most painful to the eyeballs We'll get a bowl handy back there. Now as far as the size, you just have to chop them whatever size you want. If you want them to be bigger or if you want them to be chunkier. I think typically people want them chunkier in beef stew. Some of these little carrots though are kind of small to start with. So they may end up getting done a lot more than the big ones, but that will be okay. It will all taste good in the end. Now, as far as amounts, a lot of the times when I cook, I just kind of make stuff up. I have this recipe wrote down, and so I will leave it in the uh, description below. But it's really pretty basic. It's just beef and carrots and onions and potatoes and the meat and you pressure it for about 35 minutes. You add some tomato paste. I think I usually add minced garlic, parsley, salt, pepper, just pretty basic. And then the amount of vegetables, I just try to get them to match the amount of meat that I have. And tonight I tried to cook a little bit more meat or I'm gonna try to cook a little bit more meat since there's more than just two of us eating. Now I'm gonna do the onion. This is a sweet onion, I believe. But you could use a sweet onion, yellow onion, white onion, I don't really think it matters. Just whatever you got on hand or whatever you prefer to use. Nice thing about doing an onion for beef stew is because you're going to chunk it, you don't really have to dice it as thin, which means usually it doesn't burn your eyes as much or as long, which is nice. I usually just cut it once 
then sometimes if there's a big chunk like that I'll do that and then just peel them apart and throw them in the bowl since there's only that much left of the onion why not use the rest of it just go ahead and add it all so what I've got here is just under three pounds of just beef stew meat you could use chuck roast if you had it I would probably go ahead and cut it up into pieces if you use that, but this is just stew meat that I've had in the freezer. If this was just me and Austin, I would just cook two packs of this, maybe just one. But since there's going to be more of us, I thought I would go ahead and do this much meat, and then we can probably eat on it for more than one day. So now that I've got all my ingredients nearby... I've got the Instapot on saute. I'm gonna add some butter and some olive oil and brown the meat. And we have a saying in this house, more butter, more better. <laughs> Once it starts sizzling, you can add the meat in. And then I just usually stir it around until it gets somewhat brown on all sides. I'm satisfied with that, so now it's just time to add all the other ingredients. So I'm going to add the vegetables, and then I've got a couple cloves of garlic that I'm going to mince right in. Alright, i got one more clove. <laughs> tablespoons or so of tomato paste these are kind of heaping as you can see <laughs> and at this point you can actually just go ahead and hit cancel so that way you can be getting it ready for pressure and then I'm gonna add salt and pepper And then I also like to add parsley. I'm just kind of eyeballing these measurements, honestly. Just again, depending on how much meat and vegetables you got. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and add a little bit more butter. And now, we're going to fill this with broth. Beef broth would be great. All I've got is chicken. Chicken will be fine too. I've used chicken before. And what I like to do is fill it up to where it's just covering the vegetables. So I need a little more than that. And then I like to give it a stir and try to mix everything in. Make sure to scrape down the sides. Always make sure the pressure valve back there is turned. And now we're going to pressure cook this on high for 35 minutes. So while the beef stew is cooking, I'm going to work on making some slaw and some cornbread. So I've got some cabbage here. I like to just rough chunk this and then throw it in the food processor. That's just the easiest way to do it, I've found. do about half a head of cabbage but this was a big cabbage I'll do at least that much more so I like to add carrot so again I would just rough chunk these carrots and throw them back in the food processor
So that was two little carrots, but if you had one big one, that would probably be enough too. I love the orange and the green together. It just ends up so pretty. How's your day been? It's been good, honey. How's your day? It's been pretty good. Good. A little slow, but good. That's good. Love you. Love you. You put that in the trash too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Good news, background. I know. Ain't that just wonderful? It is. So thankful. So now comes time for the seasoning. Everybody does this different. But this is just kind of the way that I like to do it. This is a cup of mayonnaise. And this is the kind of mayonnaise that I like to use if I've got it on hand because it's made with avocado oil instead of seed oils. Then I add about a tablespoon and a half of lemon juice. And then two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. I actually will use a teaspoon to measure this because Apple cider vinegar is strong, and once you add add too much, you can't take it away. So I like to make sure I'm getting an accurate, accurate measurement. About half a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. And then I like to add some sugar. And then usually what I'll do is just mix it together and taste it, and then just see if I think it needs anything else. But this is always what I start with and then go from there. It is a fairly wet slaw, but I think it usually turns out pretty good. And I really like to mince it super thin like this. You don't have to, but I like it real thin like that. All right, it's time to give it a taste and see what it needs, if anything. Definitely got enough vinegar. I may have put in a little bit too much sugar because now I feel like it needs more salt. <laughs> Maybe we'll salt it a little bit more. Maybe some pepper too. Give that a stir and see if it improved it any. Get a clean fork. Oh yeah, I'd say that's done. I got Mama's special cornbread pan out and she hides it. And I'm gonna get the cornbread going. So that's two cups of self-rising cornmeal. Need an egg. And I just crack it right in there because it's less dishes to wash. Now we need a fourth a cup of oil. I like to use olive oil or avocado oil because, again, we try to avoid the seed oils if we can. This bottle's just about empty. There we go. And then we need one and a third cup milk. Bust that egg first. We're going to bake at 475 for 20 minutes. Didn't quite make the plate there. <laughs> Austin is first. Do you need a slotted spoon for that, hun, since we're using a plate? No. Okay. Beef stew is ready. Set the cornbread out already. Got the slaw out. So we're ready to eat. like a small piece. You don't want no more? I'll come back for more. Alright. I hope that you enjoy it, darling. The rest of us will get our plate and we'll sit mm -hmm. down to eat. Gotta butter the cornbread first, though.
Okay, I had to make sure it's filming. We've only got Katie's back, but that's okay. <laughs> it's hard to get us all in it. Which means tomorrow is Wednesday. <laughs> but it is how that worked, yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe we're all in it, I don't know. Sure we are. Do you guys like it? They're very good. Very good. Very, very good. Damn. <laughs> I mean, good. No, it's really good. Yeah, it's very good. Just the kind of salt that would be really good for on a sandwich. Like, mm -hmm. just the right consistency that it would stay on there and not fall off of anything. Else. Well, that, um, I like that y'all put vinegar in it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put apple cider vinegar, not white mm -hmm. vinegar. I really like any kind of salt anyway, but it is nice with vinegar. It makes it a little mm -hmm. bit different. For some people who will refuse to put vinegar in their swab. This is kind of like team pineapple on pizza or not, and team vinegar or Those not. Those people are called wrong. <laughs> Listen, just about anything is good on pizza. Oh. You know the only thing we're missing though? Mom. Mom. I was laying in here pretty close to <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got him there. We got all of under the table. Mama's huge spirit. I'm glad y'all like the food. Very good, yeah. Really good. I mean, it's not the best I ever had. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's excellent. Tonight, I'll tomorrow just sit on my couch and sit in the yard. <laughs> Can I mow it first? Okay, no. Got that ride mower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it supposed to be cold enough? <laughs> no, probably not. Looks like a crank exit. Residual heat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be sleeping under the porch in a kayak. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll sleep under there with you. No. She'd be too scared to want to run around. Are you satisfied now that it's good? It's pretty good. Yeah. It's very good. Paul took us up there one time. He was feeling his oats and we were going back down memory lane. And he took us in his Camaro. And we went all over Moccasin Creek and all around down in there where, where him and me. Yeah. And then he said, let's go down to see where Lee's parents live. And we went off down in this awful mud hole. And yeah, there's a hole off in there. Yeah, and I'm like, Paul, oh, <laughs> what made you think that we should do that in this car? And then we got down there and he said, I might not should have done this, girls. Mm -hmm. He didn't think we were going to get out, but we did. And I was just like, but he was like in another time and another place. He was really <laughs> sweet. And it was a lot of fun. There is one piece of pie for somebody. <laughs> this is key lime pie that I made yesterday or day before yesterday, I guess. I really wanted to have time to make some strawberry shortcake because we got some fresh strawberries from the fruit stand, but I just didn't have time. So whoever wants the pie can fight over it. What's yeah. dad eating? Let me see. Look, I got uh, I got a zebra cake and Oreo plate at home. So. This is what dad's oh, eating, and Austin says he wants zebra cakes and Oreos. What Katie, you want some pie? Pie is good and very good. I wish I could have some. <laughs> <laughs> Get over here. No, I'm kidding. You think you're going to have Oreos and zebra cakes? You are right. <laughs> I do. The baby is stirring. He's like, Mom, you don't know eating pie? <laughs> no, where's my pie, Mom? Mom, I can't believe you'd eat pie without me. Mmm. One day, Ira will be big enough, he'll have teeth, and he'll be able to eat. Oh, yeah. He'll love pie. I'm sure. Okay, that was pretty pretty good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Absolutely. Yeah, lovely. I'm glad that y'all liked it. Only thing we're missing is mom. That's yep. right. Poor mom. But we're glad that Granny's doing better. Oh, yeah. We are. And we appreciate all your prayers, and I'll leave a link in the description for the recipe. And we got to sign off. <laughs> Thank you for watching. God bless you. God keep you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> gotta go. Now it's time to clean up. That's a wrap. Good night. Do you know
know what you call a really nice building on the beach that's made totally from Silver Queen? <laughs> a corndo. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Alright, squeeze in a little bit. This means the uh, clean plate game. I'm gonna pull the George on you. To protect them. Uh, hand model. That's right, babe. Dynamite dust or something. Oh, I'm really acting so much right now. <laughs> 